Hi boys and girls, this is lecture 7.2 entitled Slope Fields and Euler's Method, Part 2. Solving a differential equation analytically can be difficult or even at times impossible. However, there is a graphical approach which can be used to determine information about the solution of a differential equation. A slope field is a way of visually representing the family of solutions of a differential equation. It shows the general shape of all the solutions and can be helpful in getting a visual perspective. To construct a slope field, draw a short line segment at each point in the coordinate plane which represents the slope at that point. In this slope field, you can see the short line segments have been drawn at each point in the coordinate plane representing the slopes at those points. All of these short line segments together depict the general shape of the solution curves of the differential equation. The three curves drawn here represent three particular solutions of that differential equation. Now we're going to sketch a slope field for the differential equation y prime equals x minus y for the points negative 1 comma 1, 0 comma 1, and 1 comma 1. Remember that the differential equation is the slope function and will generate a slope for each of the points in the coordinate plane. So for the point negative 1 comma 1, the slope will be negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. For the point 0 comma 1, the slope will be 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. And for the point 1 comma 1, the slope will be 1 minus 1, which is 0. Now we're going to draw short line segments with the slopes that we have found at each of these three points. At the point negative 1 comma 1, I will sketch a short line segment with the slope of negative 2. And it's just an estimate. It won't always be exact. At the point 0 comma 1, I draw a short line segment with the slope of negative 1. And at the point 1 comma 1, I draw a short line segment with the slope of 0. Now, let's try to match each slope field with its differential equation, starting with number 1. y prime equals x plus y. This means that the slope at each of the ordered pairs in the coordinate plane would be the x-coordinate plus the y-coordinate. So at the point 0, 0, we would expect the slope to be 0 plus 0, which is 0. At the point 1 comma 1, we would expect the slope to be 1 plus 1, which is 2. So let's look for a slope field with that pattern. However, one of the easier things to find in a slope field is the places where the slope is 0. So let's examine this differential equation and determine other ordered pairs which would generate a slope of 0. When these two numbers are the same but opposite signs, we would get a slope of 0. For example, at the point negative 1 comma 1, we would expect to see a slope of 0. At the point 1 comma negative 1, we would expect to see a slope of 0. Alright, so with this information in hand, let's go find our slope field. We can see that in letter A, at 0, 0, we do have a slope of 0. But at the point negative 1 comma 1, we don't have a slope of 0. So this is not the slope field which matches our differential equation. Let's look at letter B. At 0, 0, we do have a slope of 0. At the point negative 1 comma 1, we also have a slope of 0. And at the point 1 comma negative 1, we also have a slope of 0. So this is the pattern which matches the differential equation. The answer for number 1 is letter B. Now let's look at number 2. y prime equals negative x over y. Where will this slope be 0? Where the x coordinate is 0. So let's examine the two remaining slope fields that we have. Where x is 0 for letter A, we see that the slope is 0. For letter C, where x is 0, we also see that the slope is 0. Another thing we can look at is where this slope is undefined. When y is equal to 0, we should have an undefined or vertical slope y is equal to 0 on the x-axis. So let's look at letter A. You can see that on the x-axis we do not have vertical slopes. However, for letter C on the x-axis we do have vertical slopes. Even though they're not drawn in, you can see from the pattern that's what they are. So for number 2, the slope field that matches our differential equation is letter C. 
Even though we already know the answer for number 3, let's see how this differential equation matches its slope field. y prime equals x. That means the slope is equal to the x value of each coordinate. So when x is 0, the slope should be 0. When x is 1, the slope should be 1. Now in examining the slope field on letter A, you can see that when x is equal to 0, the slopes are 0. When x is equal to 1, the slopes are 1. When x is equal to negative 1, the slopes are negative 1, etc. That's why A is the slope field for the differential equation y prime equals x. On this slide, a more extensive slope field is sketched for the differential equation y prime equals 2x plus y. For each of the 25 ordered pairs in the coordinate plane, the slope was calculated using the differential equation 2x plus y. Then short line segments are drawn through each ordered pair, depicting the slope at each of those ordered pairs. Now we're going to use this slope field to sketch the solution that passes through the point 1 comma 1. This isn't an exact science, but using the shape of the slope field, we will sketch a curve that goes through the point 1 comma 1. This curve that we sketched represents the particular solution of the differential equation 2x plus y, which passes through the point 1 comma 1. As previously mentioned, it is difficult, if not at times impossible, to find the solution to a differential equation analytically. We have seen how slope fields could be used to approximate a solution to a differential equation. Another way to approximate the solution to a differential equation is Euler's method, a numerical approach to approximating the particular solution of the differential equation y prime equals f of x y that passes through the point x sub 0 y sub 0. From the given information, you know that the graph of the solution passes through the point x sub 0 y sub 0 and has a slope of f of x sub 0 y sub 0 at this point. If this is the exact solution curve, and we know one point on that curve, and of course with the differential equation, we know the slope at that point, we can construct a tangent line at that point. This gives you a starting point for approximating the solution. From this starting point, you can proceed in the direction indicated by the slope until you reach a small increment away h, whatever that value is. This takes you to a new point where the new x value is the original x of 0 plus that increment h, and the new y value is the original y value, y sub 0, plus h times f of x sub 0, y sub 0, the slope at that original point. If you think of x sub 1, y sub 1 now as a new starting point, you can repeat the process to obtain a second point x sub 2, y sub 2, and then continuing on, you would construct a curve that is very close to the exact solution curve. Okay, let's see Euler's method in action. We're going to use Euler's method to approximate the particular solution of the differential equation y prime equals x minus y passing through the point 0, 1. This is our starting point. We're going to use a step or increment each time of h equals 0 0.1, 1 tenth. So remember, each subsequent x value is the previous x value added to that increment, 1 tenth, and each subsequent y value is the previous y value plus the increment, 1 tenth, times the slope at the previous point. So we're going to use this table to get x and y values for our approximate solution. Remember, h is equal to 1 tenth, and f of xy, our differential equation, is equal to x minus y. So each time we'll be calculating slopes by subtracting the x and y coordinates. For n equals 0, we have our original coordinates, x equals 0 and y equals 1. For the next step, n equals 1, we'll have our new x-coordinate will be the previous one plus the increment point 1, and that takes us to point 1. Then we need to calculate the slope at the previous point. Remember that is x minus y, so 0 minus 1 is equal to negative 1. Then to calculate the new y value, we take the previous y value, 1, plus the increment point 1, times the slope at that previous point, and that gives us a new y value of 0.9. Now let's go to n equals 2. 
we'll take the previous x value, 0.1, and add to it the increment to get our new x value, 0.2. Let's calculate the slope at the previous point by subtracting 0.1 minus 0.9, which is negative 0.8. We'll calculate the new y value by taking the previous one plus the increment times the slope at the previous point, negative 0.8, and that gives us a new y value of 0.82 and equals 3. We'll take our previous x value, 0.2, add to it the increment, 0.1, to get a new x value of 0.3. What was the slope at the previous point? That's going to be 0.2 minus 0.82, which gives us a negative 0.62. That means our new y value will be the previous one, 0.82, plus 0.1, times the previous slope, negative 0.62, giving us a new y value of 0.758. n equals 4. We'll take our previous x value and add to it 1 tenth to get a new x value of 0.4. Calculating the slope at the previous point, 0.3 minus 0.758, and that was negative 0.458. Calculating our new y value, take the previous one, 0.758 plus 1 tenth times the slope at the previous point, which was negative 0.458, and that gives us a new y value of 0.712 n equals 5. We'll take our previous x value, 0.4, add to it the increment, 0.1, giving us a new x value of 0.5. Then calculating the slope at the previous point, that's going to be 0.4 minus 0.712, which gives us a slope of negative 0.312. This means our new y value will be 0.712 plus 1 tenth times that slope, negative 0.312, giving us a new y value of 0.681. This table provides ordered pairs up through step 10 of the process, and these ordered pairs generate this approximate solution curve. Notice how closely the curve produced by Euler's method approximates the exact solution curve. That's it for today's lecture. According to Dr. Einstein, pure mathematics is, in its way, the poetry of logical ideas. This digital art is generated by fractals, a compelling display of logic and poetry. God bless you, boys and girls.